we kind of get back to normal in here. And of course, the second wave is going to come and then we'll all be shut down again. <laughs> I was planning on uh, going home to see my sister uh, in Ireland. <clears throat> and they've just been hit with the second wave. So they've shut everything down, can't go, won't let you in. But we'll get through this. We're strong, and as the days go by, we are becoming more and more resilient. And that's a good thing, because life can be tough at times, and it's good to have a little bit of resilience built up inside, so that when times that are difficult come to us, we'll be able to get through them. But we always get through them because of the grace of God, who is with us always, every moment, every breath. So let us pray together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we pause for a moment and ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness for the times we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you call us to share in your abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you free us from all that keeps us from you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you go before us to prepare a place for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. So, Lord, we pray at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts 
will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live in abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, in living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared a banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, the feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite the feast whenever you uh, invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad, good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Priests hate doing weddings. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Not because of uh, the couple, you know, that they're getting married. Uh, that's always delightful to see. Uh, but sometimes you get, you know, couples that are, are uh, maybe not as mature. It doesn't happen much anymore, but I mean, I had a wedding once down in Federal Hill and uh, the party started before they came to the wedding. And it was one of those weddings where like 10 bridesmaids and eight groomsmen, you know, just take up the whole body of the church. Thank God Holy Cross Church is a big, big old Baltimore City church and it could hold all those people. But one of the groomsmen, now <laughs> Holy Cross is a huge church and it was air conditioned by two home-sized air conditioners that one blew out of one vent on one side of the sanctuary and the other one on the other side of the sanctuary. So they were useless. Summertime, wedding season, hot, humid in Baltimore, useless. But this one uh, party, they came and they were, they were toasted. <laughs> and uh, we got to the service and we're bringing them up to do the the vows, and one of the groomsmen gets up there and he stands there for about 30 seconds and then he just starts to sway and boom. Passed out cold on a marble floor. What a bump. But you remember, you remember those kinds of events. You know? It's not supposed to happen. But weddings can also be just the most delightful experience for a priest. I have been thrilled in my priesthood to watch young people grow up and become thriving adults and find that one person that they truly love 
and they want you to be there as part of the ceremony. They want you to participate because you have this long history with them. And that, when you have those experiences, it makes all the bad ones just fade into the background. Because you see how God works. And throughout the scriptures this weekend, we are being told how God works. The prophet Isaiah is preaching to the Jewish people who are in bondage. And he's telling them, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a rich feast of food and choice wines, Juicy, rich food, pure, choice wines. He's playing it up big time. Because he's trying to say to his people, this is now, this is not forever. You're in bondage now, but you won't be forever. God is with you in the good times, and God is with you now. I have, uh, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of time to myself lately. And uh, I've been watching YouTube videos, and there's uh, way back in the late 90s, early 90s, 80s, um, before the evangelical movement really became a political movement, uh, evangelicalism was um, a much more charismatic kind of experience for people. Uh, And singing for those who come into the Protestant church through uh, the Mennonites, uh, through the Methodists to some degree, um, um, through the Baptist church. Singing is a huge part of worship. And um, so I've been watching uh, videos of those days And I came across a song, uh, The God of the Mountain. Look it up. The God of the Mountain is God in the good times and God, too, in the bad times. And that's what Isaiah is saying. I am with you now and always. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. And then we hear from Paul. He's uh, writing to the Philippians. He's in prison when he's writing this letter. He's uh, not yet in prison to the point where he's going to be taken to Rome to be put to death. This is just along the way, as it happened to Paul. Paul used to, uh, he insisted upon people working as they uh, ministered, you know, that they would earn their keep along the way. You know, the the laborer's worth his wage, that kind of thing. So Paul wanted to always work. But here in Philippi, the church that has been established and run, by the way, two women ran it. The church in Philippi gave Paul a collection of money while he was in prison. So that when he got out of prison, he would have food to eat. He would be sheltered. He would be clothed. They were taking care of him out of love. And Philippi is the first place where uh, Christians are called Catholic. Universal. And why is that? It's because it's a universal invitation. This Philippi is in Greece, in Macedonia at the time. It's now part of Albania, and it doesn't really exist anymore as a city. But it was the first foundation of the church in Europe. So it's very important to Paul because this is the one group of people that came to faith lovingly, willingly. They were so ready for it. And they are dear to Paul, this group of people. They're not a big group. They're small. But Paul felt, ah, somebody gets it. I have a home to go to if I need to. I will always have friends there. They will always open the door for me, no matter what hour of the day or night. That's always good to feel. And so Paul 
tells them. Because he's, you know, Paul's no different than you and I. He has his good days and his bad. He's up on the mountain and things are good. But he's had his valley moments where he thought he was alone and abandoned and forgotten. And so he's telling, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and being in need. He's thanking these people for loving him and caring for him. And I, I have to say, I have found that in my priesthood from day one, even before I was ordained a priest. I mean, I'm Irish Catholic, so like in my Irish family, I'm like next to God. At least I was back then. <laughs> um, so you're kind of like a little spoiled when you're starting out. But then as you go along, and as I went along, all the abuse stuff came down the mill and began to think, how did we get this way? Even, I don't know if you saw the thing about the guy in New Orleans, the priest in New Orleans. I can't imagine what a gross failure that was on the part of the people who formed him. He was arrested, making a video with two prostitutes in the sanctuary of his church. He was ordained in 2013. So all the people that formed him knew that they had an obligation to make sure that priest was well formed and that that priest would be a good priest and they failed God's people. You see, we are a bunch of sinners, all of us, always in need of God's mercy. But that mercy, that love, that forgiveness is always offered if we're willing to accept it. And so we have that great gospel. Matthew. This is not about miracles. This is a parable. This is like going deeper. Because in some ways, miracles, you would expect God could perform miracles because God is God. But Jesus doesn't always perform miracles. He does an awful lot of teaching along the way. And this is one of those teaching moments. And who is he addressing it to? Jesus, again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people. The people who allowed that young man to become a priest in New Orleans were the chief priests and the elders of the people. So Jesus is familiar with the fact that sometimes people can have power and authority and don't deserve it. He lived in that world. He could watch it. And yet, he remains faithful to his mission to invite people to come to know the peace that this world cannot give. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king. Who was the king? He is. God the Father is the king. The one who comes to bring hope and order and direction and purpose and meaning and true life. And the chief priests and the elders rejected the invitation to come to the king's son's wedding. These days, I miss the big weddings. <laughs> I miss those moments where you have to kind of like, all right, behave yourself. I miss those moments where young people are coming into church and they feel like the lightning bolt's going to hit me any moment now. <laughs> and you get to touch them. You get to plant a seed. And you pray that it will flourish by the grace of God. 
And in this passage, Jesus is talking about the seed that has flourished and bloomed, the people who have come to faith upon hearing his words and his parables and seeing his ministry and his miracles. But more importantly, coming to know God by not seeing him, not being a witness to the miracles, not being one to have been a participant in the miracle, but people who have come by faith. They have come to see this man as the Son of God, and they're willing to follow him. And all the people that are rejected are the people who first rejected him. But then we get to the end of the passage, when all of the wedding guests have come, from the highways and the byways, because so many people were so busy, they couldn't be bothered with God. They could not be bothered with Jesus. They just couldn't be bothered. They're too busy. And then one person comes who is not dressed in a wedding garment. In other words, he's been invited. There have been those around him that are part of this community of love. But this one person is coming for the meal, is coming for the wine, is coming for a party, not coming to be with Jesus. We are all invited each and every day to follow in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. And there are days when I have seen holiness unfold in front of me because a person demonstrated their faith in a subtle, quiet, beautiful way. And I've seen people take advantage of the church. Uh, People who uh, say they're in need, but really they just want something. They're not really in need. But you welcome all of them to the banquet, regardless. You know, sometimes like people who come begging for money, uh, we don't give out money, we'll help pay bills, we'll send a check to BG&E and we'll get you food. But we generally don't give out money because money goes to drugs. At least when I was in the city, that's where the money went. I doubt if it's much different out here. But there are times when I have given money out from my own pocket because I just knew this person, that's what they needed. They needed to be able to buy something for their kid or they needed it because they were starving. They needed it because it was cold and they needed shelter. We have all done that. We are Christian people. And when we are part of that banquet of love, we come prepared in a spiritual garment to be the servant of God, to be the one who brings comfort and peace. And we will always be here. This church may one day, 100 50, 200, 300 years from now, not be here. It's just the way life is. Things happen. But, as I was thinking the other day, you know, across the street used to be a Catholic college, a seminary for the Redemptors. Uh, And then they moved and then it became a Catholic uh, college. The ground we are on is sacred. It'll always be sacred. Because this ground and across the street and up the hill and even in the town, 
This town, this community, this church was built with love. And love changes as time moves on. But it never ends. And we should always be prepared to come to the banquet of love. Whether we are in church on a Saturday evening or Sunday morning, whether it's just a beautiful day and we're sitting out on the porch having coffee and watching the leaves fall, The Lord invites us to be his own. And when we become one of his, the banquet never really ends. Our world is a mess. I don't know if you've noticed. And yet, because we have said yes to that invitation, to come to the banquet of love. So long as there is one Christian left in the world, there will be hope for the world. We know what it's like to be up on the mountain and to be able to look out and see the beauty of God. But we are people of faith who have also been in the valley of life. And we have found God on the mountain and in the valley. We are in the valley these days. But we are people who have responded to the invitation. And here we are at the banquet of love, being a beacon of hope, on a very tenuous rock, being a beacon of light for people who are lost, being a welcome hand for people in need. You're going to have the opportunity this week, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, to bear witness to your faith. You don't have to be a trumpet blasting. You can be a gentle breeze, helping people get through their own particular valley. And when we do that, we see how clearly God works in us and through us and for us. We are here at the banquet. So let us celebrate God's love for us. Let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
as a people of love, called to be one with Christ, we offer to the Lord our prayers and petitions. For the church and those who lead her in announcing the good news of salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office and those who work with them, for the building up of the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of floods, famine, and other natural disasters, especially Hurricane Delta, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the sick, especially Tom Frederick, Dick Wall, Alan White, Evelyn Ziegler, Andrew Sidrak, Donald Wise, and Bob Grove, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of those who have died, especially Pat Patricia Galligan and Jacob Hatcher, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for the people of this pastorate, pastorate for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, you have called us to be your own, and we have said yes to your invitation. May you hear our prayers and guide us always on the way to your kingdom. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. For the praise, praise and the glory, glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, 
yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praise adds nothing to your greatness, but profits us for salvation through Christ the living Lord. And so, in the company of all the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with endless joy, we acclaim. gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again he gave you thanks and praise. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence this evening and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and John our Pastor, and women and men who guide the Church throughout the earth. Remember the people of our parishes for whom this Mass is offered, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the Resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. We ask that you look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your most holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a slight gesture of peace. <laughs> Behold 
with him who takes away the sins of the world. And happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, oh, oh. 
have an announcements to stay seated. <laughs> These were, were supposed to be done before Mass, but you know, it changes from week to week around here. <laughs> uh, the first annou announcement was about communion. <laughs> the second announcement is the annual baby bottle collection for the Columbia Pregnancy Center will be a little different this year due to COVID. Imagine that. We are unable to have baby bottles in the church, but there is a collection box in the narthex where you may place your monetary donation or you may make a donation online. Please see the flock notes in the, uh, for the link to that. And next weekend, before all masses, the Knights of Columbus will be collecting gently used children's and adult coats to provide to those in need during the winter months. A sign-up genius is now available to register for attending weekend masses. That's on the, the website for those of you who aren't technical. So ask your four-year-old grandchild. <laughs> They'll be able to get you there in no time. A flock note will be sent out on Monday mornings with the updated link. If you are not receiving St. Paul's flock note, please contact Maria Grove at the parish office. And all offertory donations may be placed in the basket in the narthex next to the hand sanitizer. That's for uh, the baby bottle collection. In order to comply with Governor Hogan's mass mandate to safeguard the health of our parishioners and community and to assure the continuance of public mass, we ask you to wear a face mask when exiting your vehicle upon arrival at our church property and during your time in our church until you return to your car. Thank you for your patience and cooperation. I look forward to the wedding day, but we won't have to do this. <laughs> It'll come. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thanks for being here.